Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the to another Utopia Week ceremony. And this week has been packed with uh, events and activities. And I hope you all got to participate in the sessions that you wanted and that you found them interesting and informative. But most of all, we hope you found inspiration for continued involvement in Utopia after this week. So, if you weren't able to be at the opening ceremony, I will once again tell you that my name is Andrea Gote, and I'm a student taking a bachelor at the acting program here uh, in Gothenburg at the Academy of Music and Drama at GU. And I, again, have the honor of being your guide through this event, the closing ceremony of the third Utopia Week. We will be joined soon by a very special guest speaker, former European Union Commissioner, the current holder of the Asar Gabrielsson Visiting Professorship, and a University of Gothenburg alumna, Cecilia Malmström. But first, I want to talk to the host of this Utopia Week, President of the Utopia Alliance and Vice Chancellor of the University of Gothenburg. I'm talking, of course, about Eva Wiberg. Eva, how has the week been? Any highlights and how are you feeling with this week is about to end? Well, Andre, this has certainly been an exciting week with so much going on. Not only were there all the sessions that were open to the public, but there were also a lot of meetings and discussions happening between staff, such as us presidents, estate managers, HR directors, registrars from each partner, students. These discussions will help Utopia on its journey towards a more open, inclusive and flexible system for students and staff alike. Well, I'm also encouraged to see so many sessions that were put together and held by students, for all students, or included our students in certain central roles, because Utopia is keeping to its student-centered focus. We've also seen how the Utopia education model creates connectivity between us, even during the pandemic. And it's also clear that the implementation of flexible education models, even after the pandemic, is vital for ensuring that our institutions and our alliance are inclusive. There's a lot of exciting research going on, and in particular in relation to the sustainability rate, as we've seen throughout the week. This week has also shown just a few of the collaborations going on in Utopia. There are mu there's much more. And what we've shown is both what's going on locally and globally. To further develop these collaborations as we move forward, we truly contribute to the quality of education and research for both students and staff. Not only that, but it means we are helping shape an international, mobile, and perhaps most importantly, critically thinking and skilled workforce for the future. So, Andrew, in short, I'm very pleased with all the aspects of this week. I want to thank everyone who's had a part in these different events, as organizers, as speakers, panelists, and as participants. I think events like Utopia Week show that we are heading in the right direction. So thank you. Well, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Before turning the screen over to our special guest speaker, I want to remind everyone that we will be showing the amazing photos that were submitted for the photo contest and <laughs> announcing the winners. Well, who might be a winner? <laughs> <clears throat> Plus, we have a special choir performance to look forward to. 
But now, we are so happy to welcome our special guest speaker, Cecilia Malmström, who will give us some inspiring words for the future. And I think she will also tell us about, about the international youth think tank. Please, Cecilia, tell us more and the screen is all yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andre. Vice Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's a true honor and a privilege to be with you today, although I wish, of course, that would be, we would have been able to meet in person. I have seen the program of this week and I'm really impressed. I hope you had an inspiring and successful conference. Different universities with its students, researchers, academics, meeting like this, exchanging experiences, learning from each other, with a joint aim to develop higher education is of course the key part of Utopia's mission. And I know from many of our students how much they appreciate this interchange, joint lectures, etc. And maybe it is even more important to meet and liaise and discuss in times of pandemic because we have specific challenges that has been added to the normal ones. The theme of this week has been journeys, and hopefully we are all starting the journey back to post-COVID life, to normality, whatever that is. Much would have changed, and we can carry with us some positive experiences of um, digital education that can be used and endorsed for the future. But I think we all agree that meeting in person is so much nicer, and it's so much better to have an intellectual discussion and develop our intellectual thinking when we meet, when we interact. I at least miss my students deeply. Because Zoom discussions and Zoom seminars tend to be a little bit too polite and boring for the dynamic of academic development. The world today is facing increasing challenges to democracy. And that is a tendency that has been reinforced during the pandemic. Fake news, conspiracy theories, questioning of science. I guess you've all encountered that also in the, le in the um, digital lecturing room. I have. And we have, I feel, a great need of cooperation to share ideas on how to address this. In some countries, the curriculum of universities have been subject of unacceptable state interference. How can we defend science, evidence-based fact, independence of academia, while encouraging critical thinking. This is ultimately a question of democracy. And some polls actually also suggest that there is a decreasing support for democracy among young people. This is urgent and we need to reinvigorate and stand up for basic democratic values and principles. And of course, academia has a key part to play in this and Utopia has a very important role indeed. I wanted to share with you a project that has grown out of this feeling that we need to find new ways to listen to young people, involve them in shaping the future of democracy and sustainable societies. A forum for this is a think tank that I am the co-proud uh, co-founder of together with a friend and colleague, Mr. Urban Strandberg, who is the managing director of what has become the International Youth Think Tank. The idea is to gather young people who do not know each other between 18 and 24 and to make them discuss challenges to our societies and values and come with specific ideas on how to improve, how to modernize democracy and making it more resilient. We call them democracy entrepreneurs. We bring young Europeans together during a four day conference, make them formulate concrete proposals on how they want to inject new life to democracy and societies. We then provide them with platforms where they can present these ideas with policymakers in politics, business, culture, academia, society in general. Thereafter, we seek to bring some of their proposals even further by letting scholars develop and concretize uh, via policy papers on how to bring these ideas forward. For example, we have two under elaboration on an idea of citizens' assemblies and another beautiful idea of how to create a UN charter of truth in order to fight fake news and protect journalists. Thirdly, we encourage these young people to continue the discussions in their communities by organizing study groups or citizens' dialogues on specific topics. So thereby we combine youth tank concept with think tank activities as well as hoping to create a democracy movement across Europe. So far, we've had two major conferences, and the next one is planned for the 22nd of November 
like, uh, this year. And we encourage you to, to apply your students or your students who are listening. We might also reach out to your institutions and researchers to ask them to help to develop policy papers. This is still in an early stage, of course, but we have already partnered up with several institutions, NGOs, forums and think tanks, where we let our young people share with other, uh, ideas with other policymakers. And I've been impressed on how much they are engaging, how seriously they take this, and how sharp they formulate their suggestions. This is, of course, only one way of trying to defend and stand up to the principles of open society and develop critical thinking and new ways of democracy. It is needed now more than ever. And this is, of course, what you all do every day. I hope that this conference brought new ideas and new energy. I do wish the next one can take place in a physical form. I hope we can look forward to that. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Cecilia. That was so interesting and marvelous job. As the title of this session promises, the journey continues. Eva, would you like to say a few final words as the host of the Spring 2021 Utopia Week, and perhaps maybe some few words for the organizer of the next Utopia Week taking place in the autumn 2021. Eva. Thank you, André. Well, the time has come. As my final official duty as the University of Gothenburg host, I now declare Utopia Week Spring 2021. Close. And I pass the torch to Pompeo Fabra University and its rector, my dear friend, Jaume Casals. Jaume, we wish Pompeo Fabra University the very best of luck for Utopia Week, Autumn 2021. Many, many thanks, uh, Eva. Congratulations for this uh, really nice organization of this week in, in Gothenburg. And, and congratulations uh, also to Cecilia for, his, for her inspiring speech. Very, very deep, very interesting uh, for me. In the video of inauguration, I was trying to imitate a famous sentence of Immanuel Kant saying that uh, Hume, David Hume, uh, has awakened him from the dogmatic dream, for the dogmatic slumber, uh, uh, said Kant. And I was playing with this idea, not to compare me to, with Kant because it it was an insupportably pedant uh, idea, but um, to to say that utopia has awakened as I think, in any case, me, uh, to see some uh, cleaner idea of uh, what a university is. Uh, we, we are, uh, each of us, in a sort of beautiful, wonderful local culture. And this local culture is usually invaded, but a really, really uh, obscure tangle of local rules that are, that are not university, that are, how to say, putting our university in shadows. Um, then uh, I would like that this kind of view, uh, clean view, this friendship that we have uh, built inside uh, the six universities of Utopia has given me a, a, a much more clear idea of what a university is in its essence. And this is what I would like um, to explain in, a, in one minute now um, to, to say why I think that I am in some way uh, with my eyes opened to other things since the moment that Utopia began. Then I am very happy, as you can Imagine to to take the torch from your hands, uh, uh, Eva. Very very happy, and I am going to to take uh, the risk to say that as autumn, I think that in Gothenburg autumn has to be really beautiful, as in Paris, 
the autumn falls uh, leaves etc uh, are a myth of the of the music of the jazz music especially uh, but Barcelona is also beautiful in autumn. Uh, then I am going to say you that I hope and uh, it's my idea to organize this next uh, Utopia Week presentially in Barcelona. And I hope all of you here in Barcelona, a nice, uh, a nice uh, city uh, uh, in all the seasons of the year, but especially, I think, that in the next autumn because of your presence. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eva, and mil gracias, Jean. I'm already looking forward to see uh, the next Utopia Week. And who knows? Maybe I will be there again. <laughs> I'm free and you can hire me and we can talk later, Jean. Now, <clears throat> let's get the final uh, festivities started. Since Gothenburg's Utopia Week was announced, we've been getting photos from all the corners of Utopia. And we asked you to send in photos of your everyday views uh, to give those of us who can't travel right now a glimpse of your world. And you all really came through. So Arned gets Arned Arned guests, let's take a look. Harlem River, talk to me Tell me what you think about Harlem River, I'm in love, 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 love Harlem River, talk to me Where are we headed now? Harlem River, I'm in love, 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 love All because of you In my pearl and my diamond shoes I've climbed the cloud, now I stole the moon Harlem River All because of you Don't. 
Wow. Those were fun, inspiring, and very beautiful views. I see, I saw so many places that I would like to visit someday. So just give me a call. I can, I can be there. And wow, it really also shows that Utopia has colleagues just all around the world. And isn't that fantastic? And now we have come to this moment that we've all been waiting for. I practiced. Let's find out who the winners are in the grand contest. I heard that the judges had a hard time coming to a decision, and I can see why. I can feel the tension even here, right here in the studio. And I hope that, uh, that you all are here again watching this closing ceremony. But first, we have a photo that didn't win a prize, but we just have to give it an honorable mention for its, for its inclusion of both Utopia Week and cats. Meow. We have Matthias Koskör. <laughs> and I mean, isn't that dashling including the two best friends to this marvelous opening ceremony? But now it's the closing ceremony. And now the prize winner is Envelope. Envelope. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> um, on third place, we have come in third place from the University of do, 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 Ljubljana. Uh, that's not me, but it's Marco Tassir. Wow. And it says here, the empty classroom where we sat this time last year and the year before. We give him a big hand. Congratulations. And yeah, we look forward to those days when those seats can be filled again. Uh, Marco, you are winning this beautiful cutting board. And this cutting board is designed by one of the students at the University of HDK, uh, Design and Art. And it's designed by Anna Pash Brecke. And it's very beautiful. It's a typical Gothenburg uh, symbol with the, um, with the bird and the fish, which is our symbols of uh, Gothenburg uh, as, a, as a city. But well, let's move on. Envelope two. Woo! Envelope two. <clears throat> oh, it's not me again. Coming in second place from the University of Gothenburg is... Hilal Yildrim. And let's see here. Well, marvelous. Better to be ridiculous than dead. Yeah, well, the New York Board of Health used this slogan to urge people to wear masks during the Spanish flu in a uh, pandemic in 1918. Well, it's just as true as today. We give him a big applause. Wow, congratulations. And you are winning. Once again, the beautiful cutting board, but as well, the Fika Swedish traditional tray. With this tray, you can always eat typical Swedish traditional Fika in its best way. Marvelous, huh? Congratulations. But now, last envelope. So exciting. Thank you so much. Please let it be me. <clears throat> and finally, the grand prize winner of a book about fika and the fika tray and the cutting board. It's three items from the, oh, it's not me again. From the CY Sergi Paris University, we have Lydia Shweshenko. Let's see here. Oh, it's marvelous. Give it applause and congratulations. Woo! <laughs> it's important to have a positive point of view. And I mean, how can you not be positive after seeing this? And you are winning not only these two beautiful items, but as well, the marvelous Swedish traditional fika book. This contains anything and everything that you need to know to be a perfect fika person. And it is made by Milo Kalian and Tine Gutlinse. And it's contained with beautiful recipes of Swedish traditional ways of eating fika. Congratulations, these are marvelous stuff. Let's see, <clears throat> a lot of papers here. Not that one, not that one, and not that one. 
Congratulations to all of the winners out there. Very good job. And to all the others of you. Marvelous pictures. And as Louis Greenfeld said, my interest in photography is not to capture an image I see or even have in my mind, but to explore the potential of moments I can only begin to imagine. I can tell that we have a created connection with each other through these photographs. So thank you again for giving everyone a window into your world. To continue, we have a pre-pandemic performance by the student chorus of the School of Business, Economics and Law here at GU. And it's great to also see students from other faculties engage in performing arts. It's very important and we like that. And the song, you might know this one. I can go the distance and my journey is complete. Anyway, it's, uh, you might recognize this one from the marvelous Disney movie, Hercules. Well, and I think personally that this song is a perfect celebration of just Utopia Week. And fun fact, the choir's name, Bolags Stemmona, can be translated to shareholders' general meeting. And this is the true spirit of Gothenburg humor, which builds on wordplay and double meanings. And with that, from me, Andrea Gato, and on behalf of the whole Gothenburg Utopia Week team, we thank you all for your in input and engagement, and thank you most of all for joining us in this journey. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Now we would like to take it away, Bolag Stemona, and to the audience. We look forward to seeing you again, in, uh, and maybe sooner than you think. I would stay after this performance. Stay tuned. And here we go, go the distance.
Wow. Thank you so much, the choir. Uh, my name is Andrea Gato. I approved this message and it's been an honor to be guiding you through, the, through this closing ceremony. But now, we're done. Oh, thank you so much. Ooh. I did hear someone say it's time to drink some bubbles. I said bubbles, mm, bubbles. Woo! Uh, can I get a glass? <laughs>